Welcome to the program. As with all cancers, chronic myelogenous leukemia requires careful and regular testing to monitor your response to therapy. The various test results are essential in helping you and your physician determine if treatment response is ideal or if either a change in dosage or even the medication is right for you. As physicians, uh, we rely on our lab uh, to conduct standard blood and cytogenetic tests. The test results tell us a great deal about the level of disease. For example, we use uh, routine blood tests to quantify the number of white blood cells in the circulation. We use cytogenetic tests uh, to look for evidence of the abnormal chromosome, the so-called Philadelphia chromosome, that is the cause of CML. Unfortunately, there are limitations to the standard blood and cytogenetic tests based on the level of sensitivity to detect the presence of your disease. Overall, this is actually a good thing because it often means uh, that you're responding to therapy and these tests are unable to detect the low levels of disease that may remain. So to get a really good picture, we need even more sensitive blood tests. The polymerase chain reaction, commonly referred to as PCR, is what we as physicians rely on to detect and quantify very low uh, levels of uh, your leukemia. Uh, we use this test to monitor progress at the molecular level to establish the presence and the quantity of the cancer causing the Philadelphia chromosome. The PCR test is very sensitive and how it works is actually the subject covered in this video. It's also up to 40,000 times more sensitive than our best cytogenetic tests. What this really means is that PCR can detect uh, one abnormal CML cell among 100,000 normal cells. Thanks to newer medications, many of our CML patients achieve and retain very good responses to treatment. Nevertheless, monitoring a disease remains extremely important and our physicians will request follow-up PCR tests every three months or so. PCR has become indispensable in determining your response to treatment uh, and for longitudinal follow-up. In the following sections, using some fun animation wherever possible, the program will help you understand the basic genetic abnormality of CML and then focus on how the PCR test works, or as I tell my patients, how PCR can literally find a needle in a haystack. Enjoy the program and thank you for watching. Monitoring your response to therapy in chronic myeloid leukemia. The chromosomal abnormality of CML, the importance of the PCR test, how PCR works, what the PCR test results mean to you. In the beginning, there was the cell. The cell has a nucleus in which your DNA resides. Your DNA has your chromosomes and your genes. The ability of all life to copy itself for future generations originates in the correct reproduction of the cell. An important part of the copy cycle is the correct duplication of the genetic information, the DNA of the cell. Think of DNA as the software or code which runs your computer. In 90% of CML patients, a rare chromosomal abnormality occurs. A switch of chromosomal material, called a translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22, form a new fusion gene, the BCR-ABL gene. Because this change was discovered in Philadelphia, it is now referred to as the Philadelphia chromosome. The BCR-ABL fusion gene functions abnormally, creating a protein increased with tyrosine kinase, which results in longer cell survival and uncontrolled cell growth. This causes white blood cells in the myeloid lineage to increase dramatically. For this reason, the disease is called chronic myelogenous leukemia. Chronic equals slow progressing. Myelogenous equals myeloid cell line. Leukemia equals white blood. CML is monitored by a highly sensitive molecular test called the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, and this is how it works. The PCR test is at least 10,000 times more sensitive than cytogenic testing. With CML, PCR testing can detect one abnormal chromosome in a haystack of 100,000. We will use the analogy of looking for the needle in the haystack. With CML, the needle the PCR test is looking for is the Philadelphia chromosome. 
DNA primer. Target DNA. DNA polymerase enzymes. Nucleotides. Your blood sample contains millions of cells, and this is the haystack. Test is done on RNA that is reverse transcribed into DNA. The first step in the process is called a heating reaction. The heating reaction causes the strands of DNA to separate. The next step in the process is called the cooling reaction. The cooling reaction causes the DNA primer to stick to homogeneous sequences of single-stranded target DNA. The DNA polymerase enzyme tag polymerase adds nucleotides to copy the remaining section of the target DNA. Once filled in by the nucleotides, a strand of new DNA additional to the target DNA has been made. This is the end of the first cycle. This is the beginning of the next cycle. This cycle will be repeated 30 to 50 times, producing 100,000 copies of your target DNA. Many of you will be familiar with your PCR results expressed as a log reduction. A new score has recently been adopted and your lab may now be reporting your results using the new international scale. The chart compares both for easy reference. International standardization of PCR testing is currently underway with a number of hospitals across Canada participating. The first test done on your sample uses a housekeeping gene with standard known results. This is used to confirm the quality of the sample, the RNA, and to make sure PCR itself is working well. The second test is used to detect the BCR-ABL gene. PCR works. The very low levels of disease we find when using PCR are reported as a molecular response. In patients with no sign of the cancer marker, that is the BCR Abelson gene, results are reported as a complete molecular remission, or CMR. In patients with some residual evidence of BCR Abelson, uh, results are expressed as reductions of this gene from a baseline uh, established uh, in previous uh, PCR tests. Patients uh, who, for example, show a 0.1% reduction using the international scale or a minus 3 log reduction are said to be in major molecular remission or MMR. Over time, we look uh, for a major molecular response or better and for patients to remain there. If ongoing PCR monitoring uh, begins to show an upward trend for example, an increase greater than 0.1 on the international scale or a corresponding 0.5 log increase, uh, we would repeat the test to confirm the result. If the increase is confirmed, we may schedule PCR tests more frequently, and if the increase persists, discuss various treatment options and also possibly evaluate for resistance to your current medication. Our lab utilizes mutation testing to help determine if a change in medication may be appropriate. Finally, it is important to realize that PCR readings will vary from test to test. This is particularly true for very low readings. For this reason, follow-up uh, PCR monitoring is really the key because it is the trend line, not individual readings, that is so important to monitor and discuss with your doctor. Thank you for watching this program. We hope you found the video both educational and entertaining. I would like to thank all of our lab technicians who look after your blood and bone marrow sample for meticulous care uh, for their largely unsung but important and essential role in advancing the care of our CML patients.